Hey, welcome to Crypto Coach 365. This is day 60, 68, I believe. So still in Paris, unfortunately still jet lagged, so didn't really get to sleep very much. Um, and we ended up, uh, excuse the noise, we ended up sleeping in. Uh, despite the birds and the outside noise, I uh, slept in kind of late. And uh, kind of decided to have this day as kind of a relaxation. So we basically just spent most of the day in the hotel room, catching up on some work, catching up on some entertainment. Um, but it still was okay day. Uh, later in the evening, we went to get some dinner at a really nice restaurant. The restaurant was right next to a castle that is actually in one of my uh, to-do lists here in Paris. Uh, unfortunately, when we got there, it was kind of late too. So most of our actual ex continuing exploration of Paris, like Louvre and stuff, will be tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> with regards to uh, cryptocurrencies, there was a, kind of a topic I stumbled on that uh, would probably be very make sense to talk about because it's very important as to what uh, the whole thing is about. Um, a lot of people seem to think that Bitcoin is just uh, a cryptocurrency, digital money, uh, kind of like uh, any of the many, many other digital kind of crypto, well, electronic money that's been existing for a very, very long time. And they don't really know what exactly that Bitcoin does or what the invention creates that has never been done before. Because we've had crypto or we've had electronic currencies for a while. All of dollars and euros are mostly electronic, like 95 or so percent of them existed digital. Uh, we've had uh, e-gold, we've had uh, Liberty dollars, uh, we've had quite a lot of these digital monies. We even had something called Flues, which was created back in 90, 1990s uh, that Oprah even promoted, but that whole thing kind of fell apart. Uh, but where Bitcoin actually differs and the main invention, the thing that it actually solves is a solution to what was previously considered to be impossible to do, which is the Byzantine generals problem. Effectively, that's um, imagine if you have two generals, well, the way that the problem described is imagine you have two generals that are on both sides of a city that is uh, that they're trying to siege and they need to be able to communicate to each other, but the only way to do it is to send a message directly through the city. And uh, there's no way for either one of them to know for sure whether the message that they sent was intercepted or not, or whether it's a legit message, because uh, there's no way to actually uh, prove that this message is legitimate. Uh, you can probably read up a better description, just Google, check out uh, Byzantine generals on the Wikipedia. Uh, a better description of what this actually is, uh, is uh, created, well, was described by um, Oleg, uh, I, I unfortunately forgot his last name, but uh, he described it as kind of like you're sitting in a bunker where you are receiving messages from the outside and you have no way to know whether the messages are uh, true or not. So somebody sending you uh, messages about uh, balances in different accounts, including your account, and you have no way to prove whether the messages that you're receiving from multiple people are fake or real. So uh, the issue might be that a bunch of people get together and they start sending you fake messages about what money exists, and then you have no way to prove whether uh, that money is actually there or not. Um, this was actually a problem that was considered to be impossible to solve uh, for like pretty much forever until Bitcoin came along. And Satoshi figured out how to solve that specific problem by using his proof of work system. And proof of work effectively adds a cost to a message so that if you want to make a message that would lie to everybody, the cost of creating that message would actually have to be higher than the cost of the message that was uh, true. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, Bitcoin is not simply just another electronic currency. The main thing that was actually the main invention of it is this proof of work thing, which is a way to prove that messages are uh, factual. You're not being lied to, even if you don't have 
uh, any way to, well, even if you don't have any connections to anybody else in the real world, you can still receive a message and verify that that message is true. And that's uh, really what makes Bitcoin work uh, the way it does, uh, specifically in a way where you can use Bitcoin without actually having to rely on any third party to verify it. Like all the old uh, prior electronic currencies I mentioned, they all required a third party to keep tabs on uh, the ledger to make sure that all the money was legitimate. All the monies that we have used uh, through our like the official government money, all of that requires a third party like a bank or a central bank or a government to verify that this money is legit and that uh, balances uh, in the ledger are legit. And Bitcoin by using this proof of work uh, solving the Byzantine general's problem is really the very, very first time that money can be used and sent digitally or any messages can be sent digitally and that's why people are kind of um, up in arms about the whole blockchain technology. It's the first time that messages can be sent back and forth without actually relying on a third party or for trust. So it's a way to verify that messages are true because any message that lies would necessarily have to be more costly than uh, a true message with the cost and as being a proof of work itself. Anyway, uh, that's it. So i um, going to relax for the rest of the day and then going to go explore Paris tomorrow. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.